In this video we're going to take a look at graphing equations using ordered pairs. Now, this type of graphing could be used to graph most any type of equation. Sometimes what you find is that there are some shortcuts that we can use to graph, but we can always fall back to graphing with ordered pairs. And the steps to do that, we're going to start out with what I sometimes call, or what you may have heard called a t-chart, where we set up a little chart like this. I'll try and draw this kind of neat here where we have an x value and a y value and we're gonna choose some x values now you could pick any x values that you want but we want to be a little bit smart about this because when we graph on our coordinate plane the origin of course is zero zero and the closer we stay to the origin the more tight our graph is going to be right here. If you wanted to, you could choose 50 for an x value, but sheesh, that would be a big graph heading way, way over here until we get to that 50. So typically, we want to stay close to the origin. The values that I like to use most often <coughs> are negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. All right. So, Remember, those are my x values. I'm going to come up with ordered pairs by putting each of those x's into my equation and see what I get out for the y value. So, in this case, we'll start with the negative 2. So if I put in negative 2 here for x, I get 1 half times negative 2 minus 5. Well, 1 half times negative 2 would be negative 1 you could work that out with a fraction if you'd like. Negative 1 minus 5 would be negative 6. Okay, then take the next one, negative 1. Negative 1 in here for x. Negative 1 times 1 half would be negative 1 half. Minus 5 would be negative 5 and a half, or negative, we could say, 5.5. Next one, put in 0. 0 for x times 1 half. 1 half times 0 is 0. Minus 5 would be negative 5. Next one, put in the 1. Okay, and it can seem almost monotonous to do this, but what I want you to notice when we're finished with this, so as we finish here, 1 times 1 half would be positive 1 half. Minus 5 would be negative 4.5. Then finally, <coughs> 2 times 1 half would be 1. 1 minus 5 would be negative 4. Now, something kind of neat happens, and different types of equations that you might do, quadratics where we have like a squared term or absolute values, um, all of those are going to have a pattern to the y values. And if you notice here, well, what's happening? Oh, we're going up. Okay, we're actually going up in value because we're at negative 6. We go up to negative 5.5 by one half each time. So there's a couple things that this serves. One, we can see that pattern and make sure that we did our calculations correctly to come up with those ordered pairs. If there's something that breaks from that pattern, then we know, ooh, I better double check that one. Also, if we graph this, this should have a particular type of shape. If we have an equation where there's just an x like this, it should turn out to be just a nice straight line. So let's mit I'll graph these ordered pairs and see what happens. All right, so let's go ahead and graph these points here. So remember, ordered pairs to graph those, negative 2, negative 6. So I would go back 2 and then down 6. So there's 3, there's 6 right there. Then the next one, negative 1, negative 5.5. So back to negative 1. There's 5, and 5.5 would just be halfway between there. Next one, 0, negative 5. Drop us down to right there. Next one, 1, negative 4.5. Puts us right here. And finally, 2, negative 4. Puts us with a point right there. Then, we want to connect the dots because people could have chosen other x values and our graphs all need to look the same so 
I'm just going to go ahead and connect those. So we'll do this. See if I can be somewhat neat about this here. And we'll make our line coming across something like that. Okay. And then, of course, we want to put arrows at the end to show, hey, this is going forever in both directions and there's our graph. Now why do we care about making a graph? Sometimes graphing gets kind of a bad rap. But what we notice is that this is actually all of the possible ordered pairs that would be solutions to this equation. Well that can be awfully handy sometimes so don't beat on graphing just uh, start to appreciate it that this is a picture of all those solutions and as they say a picture is worth a thousand words and the further you go in math I think you'll find that graphs are kinda nice so I hope that you'll keep working hard at it alright then let's try another example here let me get a clean uh, coordinate plane and here's another problem that we can graph alright so again we're gonna start the same way we'll make our little chart here and oops I'm gonna get the right spot going to make our chart where we have our x and y values and again we can choose whatever x values we'd like but I like to stay close to the origin so I'm going to go with what I call the classics negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2 okay then to get the y's that go with them we're going to take those x's plug them in now this equation is a little bit different looking. We've got that squared there. And there's going to be a particular shape that any graph where there's a squared term has. So let's see if we can find that. All right, so put in the negative 2 for x. So it would be negative 2 squared, which is negative 2 times negative 2, which would be positive 4 minus 1 would be 3. All right, next one, put in the negative 1. Negative 1 squared would be negative 1 times negative 1, which is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. Next one, put in 0. 0 squared is still 0. 0 minus 1, negative 1. Next one, put in 1. 1 squared is 1 times 1, which is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. And then finally, 2 squared, 2 times 2, 4 minus 1 is 3. All right, then... Notice, remember I said before that there'd be a pattern? In the other one, we had that constant going up by a half. This one doesn't look anything like that. But do you see a pattern? I think we have one. We've got zeros on either side here, and then threes on either side there. Hey, there seems to still be a pattern. Let's see what we get when we graph those ordered pairs. All right, first one negative 2, 3. So over negative 2, up 3, puts us right here. Negative 1, 0. It's going to slide us over to right there. Then we've got 0, negative 1, puts me right there. 1, 0, right there. And finally over 2, up 3. Alright, now, when we connect these, look at what we get. We get kind of a U-shape and this U-shape has a special name called a parabola. Okay, And if we would extend it, it would continue off in a direction like that. So that pattern that we noticed with those zeros and the threes on either side resulted in this sort of U-shape. So graphing equations with ordered pairs, and sometimes we can call this the classic. And that's just a matter of picking x values as many as we need to come up with a pattern and see what's going on and then put each of those x values in that gets us our y's graph those ordered pairs and off we go I hope this video was helpful keep working hard on your math you can do it